Hey, today I'm going to analyze the game Fabiano Carano against Hikaru Nakamura from the fourth round of the Tal Memorial, which is taking place right now in Moscow. Carano was white and started with e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and s in game round in game two of the tournament, in round two of the tournament. Again, a knight of against Karana, and we'll see if he did a better job this time because the other game in round two he lost against Gelfand. So f3 again. He chose this setup to enter the English variation. E5, knight b3, bishop e6. Still, we're following the same game, bishop e3, but now. Nakamura decides to play a different variation. Gathon continues with knight bd7 now, which is the most played move in the normal variation, whereas Nakamura went for h5, which is, I would say, slightly unusual. Um, it's kind of a double edged move. On the one hand, black prevents white from playing g4, which is his main idea of attacking the on the king side. On the other hand he's weakening a square on g5 and also the pawn on h5 and also become weak later. If black castles short he also he always have has to worry about his pawn. So it's kind of double edged. Queen d2, knight bd7 and now Karan decides to play in a more positional fashion place, knight d5. The other main move is to castle long, castle queenside. Okay, knight takes d5. In a game recently, um, Dong Ming is played against Karano, bishop takes d5. So Plak gives up his bishop, but on the other hand he doesn't lose another tempo by moving the bishop and Dominguez continues for g6 and the position is also, I would say, roughly equal. Knight takes d5, e takes d5, bishop f5, bishop e2, now rook c8, rook c1, c4 is also possible, rook c1 is pretty normal, and now queen h4 check. And Nakamura was supposedly still in his preparation because he played pretty quickly and the idea of queen h4 is to provoke a compromise some kind of compromise either bishop f2 or g3 um, flag improves or not improves his own position but, but weakens the position of the opponent a little bit because the bishop would be placed worse on f2 and then on e3 Karan decided to go for g3, queen f6, and this is also a slight weakness. It's not really severe, but maybe if black later plays h4, you know, it, it's kind of black achieved something with his check on h4. Queen f6, castle, bishop e7. Knight a5. Here we can take a look at the plans of both sides. So as we can see, White has a pawn majority on the queen side, which means he should play there because he has more pawns there, so he should advance his pawns there. And he's gonna do this in in the next moves. Whereas Black has more pawns on the queen on the king side and he will do something probably here and maybe some way try to open up the king side or the king white knight f5 black has to take the pawn rook c7 and now c4 plate the knight on a5 is kind of annoying for Black because he can't really get rid of him. Because if he plays b6, then the square on c6 would open up and this would be 
a really nice square from the knight. So black has just, I guess, to defend the pawn on b7 castle. Bishop d3. Bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, and rook e8. Um, useful move, playing the rook on this e file. And now white played b4. And actually there's an interesting idea which I noticed when I looked over this game with the computer. He gives the move rook c3. It looks really artificial to play the rook here. The idea is to actually attack again the pawn on b7. And black has to play the move rook b8 which is pretty passive. So kind of both rooks are poorly placed now but why can I just play slowly and it seems to be unclear how Plek will um, move on and somehow get rid of this pressure on the B pawn on the B7 pawn because still he can't advance because then the knight would go to C6 yeah this was another idea not really a human maybe the human way is to play with B4 and try to advance upon him. Good. Bishop f8. And now rook c1. Yeah, I don't really like this move. Um, I think the rook was well placed here, supporting c5. And even though the knight is well placed on a5, he's also kind of out of play. He's really far away from what's going on here in the king side. So maybe it was possible to play knight b3 which is also threatening c5 and now play knight d2 and bring the knight to e4. e4 is a pretty good square here even though black can possibly attack the knight with f5 but here we see the back side or the downside of h5 if let's say the knight is on e4 just okay let's say black plays queen d8 Knight e4, and if like now plays f5, then the knight has a nice outpost on g5. So Plek can't really play f5. Yeah, I think this would have been certainly better than rook c1. Now g6, Plek now continues to play useful moves, He's trying to improve the position of his bishop, moving into g7. And white played queen e2. I don't like this movie either, to be honest. Um, it allows black to play his queen now to f5, which is a nice square for the queen. Also opens up the square on f6, and bishop is more fully. So instead, um, white could have maybe played with h4, and at some point forcing Plague to exchange queens on f5 and then end the end game which should be about equal, maybe even slightly better for white. Okay, queen f5. And now let's see, white played a4, that's fine. Knight f6. And now white missed an opportunity to play c5, finally play this move and um, the position gets kind of sharp but white is fine in all the variations. Possible was... okay what happens if black takes then d6, what's the idea, rook d7, b takes c5 and if white would now keep these pawns his position would be clearly superior. But black can break open the pawn chain. But nevertheless, the white position should be slightly prefer preferable. Preferable. Um, instead of taking, black also has the option of h4. It gets pretty sharp here. White could play c6 now, and it's, it is a really unclear position. Rook b8. Really unclear. 
but white should have played this rook c8 yeah the pawn b7 cannot really be taken because the pawn c4 is also hanging and now corner played f4 yeah and this is the beginning of his troubles or his problems um, he plays on the wrong side pretty much as we said black is superior on the king side and white is superior on the queen side and by playing this move he's weakening too many squares this square is weakening the square on e4 is weakened and he's getting into trouble e4 bishop d4 he he has achieved something he has the square now for the bishop but it's not worth it really to weaken these squares it's like plays rook c7 again and this is actually not an offer to make a draw if white plays the bishop back now then the rook could go to e7 now because now c5 is not possible anymore because the pawn on d5 is hanging which is the difference to the adoration with the pawns on f3 and e5 so h3 yeah Karana probably recognized that um, black could play h4 and further trying to play in the white squares and he probably want to prevent this still h3 is also further weakening it is already pretty unpleasant for black to play he should maybe just play waiting move rookie 2 trying to save up his position but it's not easy h3 bishop g7 yeah the pawn couldn't be taken because the knight was hanging but now it's threatening queen g2 if bishop b6 then black has a nice strike here e3 and now um, white has to kind of pay for his that the piece, his minor pieces are so far away from what's going on here and the white king is attacked, is under attack and now queen takes h3 and if bishop takes c7 then black can initiate a mating attack match g4 queen d2 and bishop d2, d4 check if taken then queen h2 and black is winning so queen g2 protecting the h3 pawn and now black at b5 a really strong move breaking open breaking up the pawn chain and black is clearly better a takes b5 a takes b5 and now black bishop takes f6 if white takes then knight takes d5 and white has this nice center here and it's clearly better so bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, g4 uh, pushing the queen away but on the other hand is further weakening his king and this is gonna be a major problem h2, queen f6 knight c6 finally white has achieved to get his knight on the square on c6 but it cost it cost too much he weakened his position too much and the knight isn't really doing anything now here there are too many open files and diagonals and position is yeah already losing g5 if c takes b5 here and rook a8 with the threat of checking and bringing the rook to a2 check as well and if rook e2 then rook a3 and white uh, is lost g5 and queen h8 check and mate in the next move so g5 queen f5 and c5 and this yeah, pure desperation here. Um, best try was to play Queen H3, but this end game 
is also probably not defendable for white. So c5, you take c5, knight e5. Yeah, white has just given up two pawns. He has a strong pawn on d file, but it's too late. It's just too late here. Rook c3, the white king is under a huge attack. Rook takes e4. Also d7 would have allowed a nice finish. Rook takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes e5, check. King h1, and now nice. Going back here to h8, check. Queen h2, and rook h3. And bishop protects d8 square. Flag is winning. And after rook takes e4, king g7, a nice quiet move to finish the game threatening to bring in the last piece into the attack and it's nice how all the black pieces participate in the attack and this bishop is taking away the g1 square from the king and there's nothing white can do about rook h8 which is why he resigned at this point yeah really strong performance once again by Nakamura um, white kind of chose the wrong plan I guess in the middle game playing f4 at some point, he should have pushed c5 earlier and then Plek all played him really nicely by breaking up with b5 and yeah all in all a really convincing performance thanks for watching and see you in the next video